you can keep drinking it. Yeah, it's going to get fat around your arm. Okay. Scissors! Scissors! <laughs> Tell her the head is coming! <laughs> I have to close my eyes because I'm stressed thinking about it. Meanwhile, this is like 50 hours ago. <sighs> this is... I'm sweating. I can't tell this story. <laughs> Hello, the beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well this Christmas season. And um, guess what we have? A baby. Ah, baby. We have a baby. A baby has finally arrived. Thank the Lord Jesus. Because I was tired and whinging and moaning. And um, yeah, we have a newborn baby here. I am about to do the labour and delivery story because it has to be done. And I feel like it's deja vu because I remember the last time I had a baby and I came and did a video with Mike and told you the story. Today we have an introduction to this little one here, to baby Grace. And um, this, this is an intense one, people. It's intense. And unfortunately, I wish I could be joking about this as my labour and delivery delivery story but I can't be and I'm like Patricia why is it that you are the person this ish happens to can't things just be normal in your life and I feel like I'd, I just don't know so I want you to get strapped in I want you to sit down and um, hear this story at some point in time uh, we're gonna call Michael Michael midwife he's going to come and join us and um, I will share the little bit of footage that I do have in relation to my giving birth story. But yes, what we did, the, this is Baby Nova, my star, my supernova. She is here. Yes, um, we'll get into the names and all that kind of stuff a little bit later. But yes, this is Baby Nova. She's two days old. She's two day, days old. Yeah, or like, let's say 55 hours old, okay? Wow, this is strong. I'm really here filming a video. Anyway, welcome to my channel. So, labour and delivery story. So, my little one was due on um, the on Friday the 20th of December. And um, I actually was considering getting an induction um, for the Monday the 23rd. But she came the, on Saturday, the day after she was meant to arrive. But I'm not going to lie, I was already getting quite impatient. And on Friday, with her delivery day, I was like, she's not here. Wah, she's not here, whatever. And I was actually meant to see my midwife on that Friday, who was meant to give me a sweep. Now, if anybody knows what a sweep is, a sweep is something that they do to kind of help induce labour. Where they basically, this is going to get gruesome here, they basically stick fingers up to you and they separate they try to like open up your cervix a little bit more using their fingers they kind of get in there juggle it around cause a little friction and that should hopefully stimulate pro prograstylins i think that's what it's called hormones that help soften the cervix i actually had this done the thursday before um, i'd gone into the hospital and they had already given me a sweep but when i had a sweep then um, she, the doctor said to me, my cervix is very closed and um, very high up. There's lots of technical terms. I might write something on the screen here, but I haven't got time. My breasts are full. Um, so that meant that, you know, it's, it's going to be a while. Nothing really happened. I don't think she was even able to get really close to my cervix because it was like posterior, posterior. So she went up in there and was like, oh. Oh, have to go all the way in and then she said the position of my cervix is closed so i was already a little bit like oh my gosh at least let me be like one centimeter dilated or something because you usually hear that about people's second pregnancies that they're you know dilated um a little bit beforehand i wasn't so on the friday i on my due date i was meant to see my midwife who was going to give me another sweep and she gave me a call on that Friday and said, Patricia, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give you a sweep today. I've got two other ladies in labour and I don't want to, um, I, I'm going to have to look after them. Um, so I'll come and see you tomorrow. Meanwhile, my heart sank because I was like, oh my gosh, this means I'm going to have to be induced on Monday. Because usually if you have a sweep, it takes two or three days. So she came on Saturday 
did a sweep. So we have um, community midwives. So they actually come to your house and see you um, and see pregnant women in the community. So I don't have to go to a doctor's or anything. It's really, really nice, actually. Really amazing. So she comes and it was really nice. But it was, it's not nice. It's not nice to be poked in the fanny. But um, she was really gentle compared to the doctor who basically couldn't find my cervix. And then she did like a little wiggle around and she said, oh, actually that I was about two centimeters dilated and she gave it a little stretch that hopefully that should trigger something and I was like please let it trigger something please let it trigger something and so this is Saturday and I was like oh nothing's happening not even a niggle not even a twinge not even a Braxton Hicks because I was really hoping like I'd start to feel like oh maybe I'm gonna have a little contraction or something and nothing happened it was actually the most boring um day in regards to movement or any kind of like maybe action happening so what happened I was just kind of like oh, let's hope for tomorrow let's hope for tomorrow and then what happened um at about 8 30 p.m Marie called me my hairdresser shout out to Marie and she's like I'm gonna come around with like a little gift or something for you and I said like, okay thank you love and then I started to feel like a few aches a few aches I was like yes a few aches but it didn't feel like contractions to me um again it felt a little bit like cramps um a little bit of like some of the other pains i've had but nothing you know too intense and i was like oh i think these are braxton hicks anyway so marie comes around she gives me a bottle of mild wine i'm like yeah i can't wait to enjoy this as well as some like cards and stuff and then um i was like oh just let me just stop a second like oh this Braxton Hicks is getting me because it wasn't that painful. It was just like, you know, a little twinge. I was like, oh, this is a little twinge. And I was like, and then we were talking and whatever. And I was like, oh, I had another twinge. And she's like, Patricia, are you sure you're not having contractions? I was like, no, I was like, these can't be contractions because it's very like chill. So I was talking to her and then she actually was like, let me just download the contraction app on your phone. Um, just see if there's anything consistent. So she, do, um, she put the contraction app on my phone and I had a few more of these like, oh, it's a twinge, it's a twinge. And she's like, let me leave you now. And I was like, okay, maybe this is about to be the start of labor. Cue the next six or seven hours or the new, cue the whatever hours. This is now 8.45, 8.45, quarter to nine. Now, um, then we realised, okay, these are contractions because they're happening every five minutes and they're lasting about 40 seconds. Labour has started. I'm smiling because I'm smiling for a contraction. Ten machine on. Apps on the go. They're about 30 seconds long. Every... They're not that consistent. Maybe like every four minutes and I cut all of a sudden my mind went black I can't remember what you're meant to do when you're in labor right so I called the labor line and I'm like oh Michael called them I was like oh I think my wife is in labor and um when should we start coming in they said well we want you to have contractions at least consist consistently for two to three hours and um, they need to be regular and they need to last for at least a minute um, but to have them for at least two to three hours and at this point in time i'd been recording it for about 30 minutes um less than 30 minutes it was like yeah yeah about 30 minutes i had only had about five contractions by that point in time and so she was just like can you talk through them i was like uh yeah i mean i'm kind of trying to breathe um and she's like okay well give us a call back a little bit later I was like, okay, fine. Because anyway, nobody wants to go into hospital and start, you know, hanging around or get sent back like I got sent back the last time. So everyone says, try and stay at home for as long as you can. So, or now. <laughs> so, um, now this is, a, now, I now had contractions for about 40 minutes. And um, it started to get very intense. I was waiting for my sister and Michael messaged her at 8.45 to say, Patricia's starting to have contractions. You might want to start coming here in the next few hours. And he called my mum to come to look after Grace. So my mum had arrived. So the contractions were starting to get really, really painful. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are like really intense. I said, Michael, ignore what they said on the phone. Let's start going to the hospital now. Mum's here. Let's go. Was still waiting for Maureen, who wasn't here. And then um, 
I was like, right, let's come on, let's just put on my jacket. I was like, we have to go, we have to go. I started to have a feeling, which is a feeling that every woman has, is needing to go to the toilet. I was like, if I have this feeling, it means it's time to go. And so um, I now step into the hallway. I have the longest, hardest contraction I've ever had in my life. And I was like, oh my God. So my the front door was open, it was raining outside. I was holding on to my mum, thank God for her, because I was in pain. So I doubled over, I was like, oh my God, this contraction has just got me, let's start going. Then my mum's like, well, quickly, put on your shoes, you need to get in the car. And something, everything in me just went, it's too late. And I kind of stopped, and I looked at the, my shoes, and I looked at the rain outside, and I looked at the car, and my mind was doing this processing of, you're not going to be able to make it outside. Um, oh yeah, getting emotional. I just was like, and then my heart sank and I went, not again. Because if you don't know, I had a fast delivery the last time, which meant I had to get in an ambulance. I was crowning in the ambulance and it was all a kerfuffle. And I really wanted to avoid that this time, which is why I was like, let's go. I had only been having contractions for 37 minutes. Okay. I had recorded 13 contractions at that point in time. So, um, and this is actually a thing that nobody talks about. It's called precipitate birth. So people who have births within two to three hours or precipitate, precipitate, some kind of birth. If you have fast deliveries, you're prone to have them again. So I was aware that this might happen, which is why I was surprised that the lady on the phone didn't tell me to come in, but she said two hours. I was like, okay, fine. And then um, I, uh, my heart sank, I went not again because I couldn't walk and I knew. So I stopped in the hallway, I got my hands and knees and I was like, Michael, call the ambulance. Now the last time he delayed and was like, oh, let's just try and get into the car and go. This time there was no delay. He just called the ambulance and he called 999 and whatever. And I had my coat on because my mum had put my coat on. I was like, you lot just take the coat off. So I take the coat off. Take the, and I had a dress on and knickers on. Now I'm on the floor in my hallway. The door, the breeze is blowing. The rain is pouring. And I can hear Michael on the phone to the lady. I have to close my eyes because I was stressed thinking about it. Meanwhile, this is like 50 hours ago. <sighs> this is, I'm sweating. I can't tell this story. Um, I'm on the floor. I can see the rain outside because the wind is blowing. I'm roaring like a lion <laughs> for all my neighbours to hear. I'm not even crying because at this point in time, the only thought that's going in from my head is I desperately need pain relief. I was like, I need an epidural. Epidural what? There's nothing. There's no, at that point in time, there's no epidural. There's nothing. I was like, I need an epidural. I was like, it was just me, my mum and Mike and then the person on the phone. And then I started saying, the head is coming, the head is coming, the head is coming. So he's saying, telling the lady on the phone, the head is coming, the head is coming. He can't see the, the head because I'm wearing knickers. And I'm like, I'm telling you to tell her the head is coming. <laughs> I'm crouched down in the hallway, right? And so she keeps saying on the phone to him, okay, towels. So he got towels. He runs to the bathroom, gets towels. He gets bed sheets. And then um, they were like, you need a shoelace. She kept asking about a shoelace. I was like, you don't need a fucking shoelace. None of us knew what to do next. Hello. And so eventually, literally, the head was coming out. And I was like, the head is coming out. The head is coming out. I was like, scissors. Scissors. <laughs> shouting my you need because he needed to basically i couldn't take my knickers off so i got him to get scissors to cut my knickers off lo and behold what is there a head, a head. why is there a head in the hallway somebody explain why why where's that where's the ambulance I, and i was getting frustrated because i could hear this woman on the phone and um and i could hear this woman on the phone i'm like have you not dispatched people i beg please dispatch someone i need help here is michael gonna deliver this baby so they're like okay he said you they i could hear the lady on the phone saying um that he to michael that he needs to protect the head and make sure he gets a hold of the head 
And I was like, well, Michael's going to deliver this bed, baby, a.k.a. Midwife Mike. Midwife Mike! Midwife Mike! m and M. let's call him. Enter the building. I'm trying to tell. <laughs> I said this is deja vu, us where, where telling. Where are you up to in your story? No, when she said to you, you're going to have to deliver the head. Oh, Can you gosh. say what was going through your mind? So... I, mean, I'm just, I don't want to repeat everything you've already said. Basically, I've already said the crouching down, hidden tri tiger in the hallway. When you I roared the entire house down. Roared the front door open. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically. Um, oh, yeah, so yeah, you said call 999. I called 999. The lady starts asking a thousand questions. I'm sure they have routine protocol. And to be fair, the lady on uh, the phone was really good. She was very and, calm, and but very I didn't calm. know if she had dispatched an ambulance and, um, yet. And she said, okay, right, I'm going to tell you what to do. Um, so that you can deliver the baby or something like that. And I was like, what do you mean, what do you mean tell me what to do? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean tell me? There's, there's someone else, someone's coming, right? <laughs> and then she was like, okay, you're going to have to. And the, but you kept saying the, the baby's head was coming. So I was like, um, okay, there's me, you and mum. There's nobody else. So shit is really real right now. I'm going to have to actually do this. How? How? How is it going to happen? But you know, um, I think with th looking back on it, kind of almost instinctively because you know there's no choice you just do mm. it so you have no but choice. i was trying to i'm not gonna lie i was trying to not i could feel the head there and i was just trying to not push it out because mm. i was really scared because i didn't know what to do so i was scared of tearing i was scared of scared of doing something damaging oh. so but you can't hold a baby yeah. in right you can't i was like trying to hold it in and not pushing because i know that people say don't push sometimes i was like mm. all right try not to push try not to push oh yeah i was and, waiting and for lady, you no, no, to tell you what to do was, lady on the phone was giving that instruction there and she said okay like, so you need to when you see when you see the head make sure you cut you have your hands ready for the head the baby when it comes out it's going to be really slippery so yeah. don't let make sure you've got your hands ready so you don't drop the baby i was like okay 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 right fine in my mind i'm still thinking wait am i actually delivering this baby <laughs> like you think this is the kind of thing you hear about on like tv or in the paper but i'm like no i'm actually about to deliver this baby and i was saying that she kept and, um, asking you to get shoelace yeah yeah i was just, I, 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 I didn't know i just ignored that after a while yeah she was doing good. no everyone she... was talking there was too much noise i couldn't hear the lady so then i went to it i just I, I, I went shut the f up because i like i couldn't hear what she was telling us to do and i was getting quite stressed <laughs> and then um the head started coming out, and then this head just plopped out. No, she said, "Tell her to push on the contraction." Oh, yeah, she said, "Wait," she said, "Don't wait, don't push in between. Wait for the contraction. When the next contraction comes, you have to push this baby out." So I'm like relaying this back. He to said her to me, "So she can hear it and push know what on to the do. next contraction." So I yeah. pushed, and then the head went push out. <laughs> And, and I was like, oh my God, part one. And then she was like, is it breathing? Yes, yeah, the whole baby wasn't out. The first was just the head. And then she said, wait for the next contraction and then push the rest of the baby out. And I told you that. And to be honest, I can't take any credit. Flipping Superwoman here did an amazing job. Because to be with no like professionals, no equipment, nothing, just basically on the floor in your house with someone on the phone and two idiots, me and, well, not idiots, <laughs> but two people who don't know what they're doing sort of talking around you. To be able to just push the baby out was just Well, there, I amazing. think there's nature because there's no choice. What can I do? What could I do? There was nothing there. So, but his guidance was really, really helpful. Midwife Mike, because mm. he was like, on the next contraction, we're going to try and get the body out. You mm. need to get the body out. On the second contraction, I pushed the baby out. Michael caught the baby. Wow. And then it just was like, whoosh, loads of water just like fell out, wow. right? It was like water and like But honestly, stuff. honestly, I know this might sound, like some people are like, ew, whatever, but... At that point in time, there's no like time or place in to your feel brain weird. to feel any kind of like way about what's actually happening. The only thing, it's like it's like some autopilot thing that happens. Yeah, of course. The there's a baby. Thing, the only thing you're thinking about, you don't care about anything. But did babe did water splatter all over you? Blood, water, everything, the whole nine yards, <laughs> right. everywhere. But it's chaos. But you don't care about anything. But we had loads of sheets down. The so baby comes out. I'm holding the baby. The baby's kind of blue, which they are. And then she's like, I need you to tell me, is the baby breathing? Is the baby breathing? Can you confirm it's the baby breathing? Is the cord wrapped around its neck? I'm like, I don't know if the baby's breathing. I can't tell. I can't tell. And I was like tapping the baby and that. You're supposed to rub And the reason bit. why is I've watched so many of these birth videos. I know that you need to rub them to stimulate. So we rubbed the baby. Uh, he rubbed the baby. I was still on all fours. I could, I heard one single gargle and then I was like, keep the baby warm, keep the baby warm. Because the funny enough, when I had seen the midwives, they were like, 
oh, in case you deliver at home, make sure you don't oh, do it yeah. near a draft. Meanwhile, the front door was wide open with the wind and rain, rain um, b- blustering. I was like, keep that baby warm. It was like 10 at night. Okay. Yeah, it was really late at night. And the reason why the door was open is because we were waiting for the ambulance people to come. Like, and no one arrived. Mm. So it was me, Michael, mum, and a newborn. And meanwhile, I was still attached. My placenta is still inside of me. And the um, the um, the cord oh, is, yeah. he's holding the baby. And the baby's attached to the cord. And the cord is we inside of me. Like... So we couldn't move. And I was like, mm. please don't pull the cord. Do not snap the cord. I know that you're not meant to snap the cord. Don't pull the baby. So one, I couldn't get the baby or hold the baby for skin to skin. Michael couldn't move. He had to stay in the same position until someone came to give him assistance. So he's kind of stuck. I'm kind of stuck. We're like waiting for someone to come. Mm. The lady's on the phone um, just saying, okay, just keep the baby warm. Keep the baby wrapped up. Check to check the airways are clear. And she was saying all this stuff. Eventually, um, an ambulance arrived. Literally four <laughs> ambulance men. <laughs> I was like, four, four. do you know what? You don't care, right? You don't care. But I was like, why is it four men rolling into this place right about now? Four men. My ass is in the air. This is a lot. And um, the, all I f- remember thinking is, wow, you lot are wearing these big, heavy ass boots. <laughs> That's what I remember because I could just see their feet because I was like crouched down. And they're like, oh, well, congratulations. Oh, good job. They were like congratulating mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And the lady on the phone was like, congratulations. Yeah, I'm going to leave you now. Uh, I'm going to leave you now in the care of the yeah, ambulance men. So they're like, oh, how are you? I'm like, oh, I'm fine. <sighs> am I fine? Am I fi- now am I fine? And I was like, gas and air, please. Anything to give me pain relief. It, I was in pain. Um, obviously not as pain. I've just delivered the baby anyway. The gas and air isn't going to do something much. But I was like, gas and air, gas and air. And then they caved me gas and air. And I've got a shot of me just saying, please. Check you out and everything in a minute. I'm like, I'm just going to get my finger there as well. Because this is the best. Because, uh, what number is that? Oh, yeah. Hold that for you. You can keep tagging it. Yeah, it's going to get tight around your arm. Is it okay? I think I've got it. She's watching Facebook. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah the placenta and then I was like call my midwife call my midwife you know that I've got the midwives in the community so um so so I got my mum to get the book then the ambulance man spoke to the midwife and she came about let's say quarter past 10 so meanwhile my contraction started at quarter to nine the baby had been delivered by 10 mm. and my midwife there was there at quarter past 11 I had um how long was I my labor 45 minutes maybe up to an hour max. maybe an hour maximum which is what was really really scary because you couldn't have planned for this what also happened is that what did what did the ambulance guys did so they were just checking i was all right clamped the they floor. clamped the cord with some they had clamps they even had a little baby hat and they had like a little baby towel oh, yeah. so i think obviously they were made aware that this is for a delivery so it was quite cute to see like these four four burly men with like little baby hats and stuff yeah. to like put on the baby and then and the midwife came they sort of and they kept way. asking if I did. I thought I had delivered the placenta, but I hadn't delivered the placenta because I started feeling cramping. I was like, this, the placenta isn't delivered. And um, I really wanted to get the baby because you're really meant to have skin to skin quite soon. Um, and I hadn't had the chance. It had at least been 15, yeah. 20 minutes before I got the chance I remember to that. hold the baby. I, w- I wanted to give you the baby. But and everyone wanted to give me the baby, but we wasn't we in a position to and, do that. And it was probably like about five, maybe even, maybe ten minutes, five minutes before the ambulance came up. We were just there in the hallway holding the baby. <laughs> None of us could move. I was on the floor. You were on the floor. Your mum was there. No one could move. And we were just holding the baby, trying yeah. to... It wasn't that long, but it felt like a long time. Yeah, it did feel like forever. And I wanted to pass the baby to you. But there was no way to pass her I, safely I to me. I couldn't pass it to you 
And so we were just like sitting there like, please someone come. And I was just on all fours, like with my what, legs, uh, a kimbo, is it called a kimbo where your legs are spread out? Yeah. Just, they were just doing all kinds of scissor and um, hold on. You did an amazing job. I don't and then care. hold on, and then, and then the midwife was like, would you like to cut the cord? And then Michael cut the cord. Yeah. And it's like, um, oh, can I have some yeah. more gas in there? Yeah. Oh, you just put the oh, trouble in it. I'm just going to pop that there so it doesn't go in all the blood everywhere. I just, so just, literally just, just like... between... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I was just chugging away on gas and air. I can't remember. I was just like, give me the gas and air. It was the best thing ever. Oh, my gosh. And then eventually, once they cut the cord and everything, they were able to pass me the baby. I sat in the hallway for forever. Um, just, I can't remember. Actually, I think you cut the cord before I delivered the placenta yeah, yeah. because I couldn't move. I was like, I'm not, where am I going? Hmm. But we had, I had to move from the hallway. But I was like, you lot, listen. So literally, Michael, you helped pick me up. The ambulance man picked me up. Yeah. Went to the sofa. Then they carried me to the sofa in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the midwife came and then brought an, a midwife assistant. So they basically did everything so that I would hospital. have done a hospital yeah. at home. And they, um, they, they said, you want to, you, you can go in if you want to, to, but we're going to do the same thing there as here. Yeah. So, so like, they brought me in. Yeah. She gave me an injection, which was to help my uterus contract. Yeah. So one of the risks of um, childbirth is hemorrhaging or bleeding to death. Um, let me tell you that pregnancy and um, giving birth is actually quite an intense situation. So they... Um, Very intense. Very intense situation now, Michael. Well, I've seen it firsthand. He's sweating at the thought of it. And then they gave me that injection. I did tear. Um, it was a, a one and a half degree tear. But oh, my, the sewing me up hurt more than the giving of the baby. Let me just the, the delivering of the baby. Let me just tell you lot that for free because they one had to inject my perineum, and then with it two injections. I was like, am I gonna feel it? And because I've it's all been very intense. I just was like, I don't want any more pain. Wouldn't, wouldn't recommend a perineal injection? <laughs> Definitely not. Perineal injection Definitely anymore. didn't want any more injections. Uh, but per then perineal? I basically was like, I dosed up on gas in there. I was like, Meh. <laughs> and then I was like, Michael was there. I was going so hard. All I remember is everyone saying, Patricia, it's better if you take deep, long mm -hmm. breaths. Meanwhile, you're like, <laughs> I was like, give me that gas in there. And then I was like, <laughs> truth be told by that point in time mm. because you were okay and the baby was okay yeah the baby was, was fine okay, even though it was chaos it was like just a huge nothing but really relief that was an overall feeling for me obviously i'm not it was that. relief i'm not having my perineum stitched, <laughs> stitched up <laughs> <laughs> injected um, but, <laughs> so, but wait hold on they injected me and then i was high i was in, it was so painful michael uh, michael took the brunt of my pain because i was holding on to him Ooh. I was I, squeezing nails, his arm. Show those nails. No, I it had, wasn't these nails. It was, I had whatever nails she was wearing. I had daggers being thrust into my. Well, whole they arm. were like stitching me up down below. They had like stirrups. We got two of the kitchen tables as stirrups, and they just sewed me up. And then I had the injection. Wow. They checked the baby. They gave the baby vitamin K. It, I, I'm going to call it a good birth because. Yeah. No, do you know what? I think there's what pros and cons. Was, I think yeah. one that. Um, I don't think a lot of people talk about women who have really fast births. And actually, one of my anxieties throughout this pregnancy was this happening again um, and not being ready. I, I hate not being ready. I'm usually, I'm such a control freak. And it's like, this is a situation I have no control over. Um, and it was a fear and I kept bringing it up. But they were like, oh, you should do a home birth. And I was like, nah. And you know what? Even if I had accepted doing a home birth, I still wouldn't have been ready in time but maybe i would have had like a midwife around or something i would have called them once my once my contractions had started and, and people don't talk about this birth and that it can also be a little bit traumatic just because it was a little bit um unplanned, unplanned and it's quite scary um but overall she's really healthy and lovely we haven't left the house this is a situation we haven't even come we don't have the i didn't have the cute hospital photo i really wanted the cute hospital photo you know when you've got like the admission badge on your hand and the baby has one no i've got doubled up looking a hot mess bewildered in the hallway and then the sofa in the living room after being stitched up and being high on um nitrate oxide is it nitrate oxide what's it called gas in air gas gas in air yeah. 
That that's my situation. Michael looks like he's stressed. Yes. You're sweating thinking about it. Maybe I'm just having like PTSD. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. I'm flashbacks. Like the flashbacks. I had a moment here where I was like, oh my god, but this is really intense thinking about it. I didn't feel anything because it was. I know it's not about me, obviously. In all lessons, in all things considered, my job was easy. I just had to catch the baby. Like, I didn't have to do any squeezing. But imagine baby. if but the baby slipped on the floor. Like, and yeah, okay, okay. That's but, also but scary. Still, you know, it's just pure adrenaline. It's like when you've got no choice. You, you just, do, your you do what you can do. Your just kicks in. Adrenaline and all the rest of it, and that's it. So... Yeah. Like the old days. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a happy Christmas. Have a happy Christmas. Uh, this is New bright. Year. This is Brightmas episode seven. Seven. It's the end. It's the end. We end. Okay. End of Brightmas. Yeah, we're done. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.